up to half the cost of a plane ticket is fuel. And most of the fuel is to overcome drag. What savings could be made if drag could be reduced? If we could reduce the fuel bill on an aircraft by 10%, that would work out to about $15 billion a year in fuel cost savings globally. So it's a huge number. Engineers are on the case, studying the flow around wings. In this water tank, red dye goes over the wing, green dye under, revealing the flow downstream in full and beautiful detail. With this setup, you can actually see what happens when an aeroplane stalls. At the moment, we've got a nice smooth flow over the top and the bottom of the wing. But if you increase the angle of the wing, the angle of attack, you can see that flow just breaking up a little bit there. And all of a sudden, it separates away from the top of the wing. It's stalled. Next thing is, your plane plummets out of the sky. But this kind of smooth flow, laminar flow, is not what produces much of the drag. Rather, it's caused by an invisible skin of microturbulence around the plane. You can see this turbulence by putting a rod in a smoke-filled wind tunnel. Upstream, the flow's smooth, laminar. But downstream, the whirlpools and eddies of turbulence are clearly visible. These cause drag. Turbulence is not just associated with flight. It's very common throughout nature. It's there whenever the wind blows or the ocean flows. Indeed, turbulence's drag is vital to our world. It'd be a very different place if all flows were smooth laminar ones. For example, if we looked at the Yarra River and we assumed it was just a laminar flow, so sheets sliding over each other, and you did a quick calculation, the speed of the Yarra River would be 20 kilometres per second. That's 72,000 kilometres an hour. There'd be no Yarra River without turbulence. We've been working on it for over 100 years and still we have very limited knowledge or understanding of the turbulent processes. So, to study it in unprecedented detail, over 14 years, Melbourne University engineers built a very impressive wind tunnel dedicated to reducing drag. Now this is the opening of the wind tunnel. Air is drawn in through here via the giant fan, but what happens on the other side is the key. The air passes through a series of baffles, which gently turn it through a 180 degree bend. Then a series of meshes make the flow completely smooth, ready to enter the impressive working section of the tunnel. What makes our tunnel is unique is we have a working section which extends over 27 metres. That's much larger than any other wind tunnel in the world for this flow quality. Turbulence is not a random mess like it might appear. A sheet of laser light through the flow reveals the patterns. I guess the motions within that layer, everybody used to believe that they were quasi-random. It's repeating patterns or features within that turbulence that we can learn about. And if we can learn what those features are, we can learn to control them. Control them and drags reduced. This might be done by putting tiny actuators over the outside of the plane to subtly change the flow. So the actuator could be tiny flaps that pop up from the surface, or it could be micro jets that, that pulse in such a way that you're going to destroy those turbulent eddies close to the surface. Another way to reduce turbulence is to take inspiration from nature. Dolphins can swim faster than expected because of vibrations in their soft, flexible skin. It's believed that what happens there is that you get a travelling wave set up in the skin of the dolphin, in a way, again, interacting with the turbulent flow, which producing conditions where they can travel at much higher speeds as to if it was simply a solid, rigid surface. But the easiest animal for us to copy is the shark. Its skin is stiffer, but less smooth. If you were to rub the surface of a shark, it would be particularly rough in one direction and not in the other. So there's definitely a textured surface to it. Here's the close-up. This textured skin has evolved to minimise turbulence. Through methods that we don't entirely understand, it somehow manages to reduce the turbulence close to the surface of the shark and hence reduce drag. 
One day, the outside of aeroplanes may resemble shark skin. Here's one of the surfaces they're planning to test. Now it's covered in a whole lot of very fine ridges. They're less than half a millimetre apart. And they're set up in quite an interesting way. Here, they tend to push the flow, or in this case, my fingers together. Here, they push it apart. Now they're gonna lay a whole lot of these tiles in the wind tunnel. By testing different groove arrangements, they hope to find the one that best reduces drag. It's early days yet and researchers are just starting to unlock some of Turbulence's complex motions. But the results from this incredible new wind tunnel will emerge over the next few years.